What if I told you one of the most innovative cars with the most insane innovations was made in 1992, but the actual innovations themselves were made in 1982, the active suspension. This took 10 years to be perfected and then was made for Nigel Mansell and Ricardo Patrese to make one of the most unstoppable cars ever. I mean, if it wasn't for Max Verstappen dominating this year, this car would still hold a record for having the most dominant season, but looks like Red Bull is on track to win them all. This car had so many insane innovations and stuff that cannot even be used anymore in sports. It actually was something almost being compromised to be used for the current regulations we have, the floor regulations. That is the active suspension. This suspension was so revolutionary that if it was to actually come back in the sport after its 1993 ban, Williams was still holding some documents from everybody else to actually be able to use it on their new car because they are currently the only team that kind of has an idea of how this all looks. Now, this actual car was also designed by the guy that made the RB19, and that is Adrian Newey, when it comes to the actual aero package of the car. But where this real beauty came with the active suspension, it was made by a guy called Frank Durney and nothing has been made like this till this day. As I said, this innovation was banned, but why was it banned? Well, in current Formula One regulations, actually introducing active suspension would be a lot easier than it was before because the computer systems are a lot more updated, it's a lot easier, and with the whole entire wind tunnel system, you can actually test this stuff to make it a lot safer. But back in the day, Nigel Mansell, the guy that I actually compared to Max Verstappen, was lapping cars at some point by two seconds per lap. And I'm not kidding you, it was literally two seconds per lap in the beginning phases. It actually was going up even more as Nigel Mansell was finding more and more time. He said he did not want to drive this car in the beginning. It was so slidey, he couldn't feel the rear end of this car, and it was not something that he preferred. He actually refused to, and they built him a completely different car. Now, can you believe that? But as Nigel Mansell was coming to grips with this car, finding the grip and so on, he would go faster and faster per every single lap. The beginning laps tended to be slower because he was trying to find the grip, but as he found it more and more and more, he pushed his car to the very limit. Does that remind you of somebody? A Sir Max Verstappen drives in a very similar way, pushing the limit, hitting the car to its maximum and getting the lap time out on every single lap. This suspension was so insane that slow speed, medium speed and high speed corners could all be taken at the optimal ride height and the car was actually able to go through them effortlessly. By the way, this Williams also comes off of a very dominant McLaren car. They come in running the contention in 1992, but in 1991, we had Senna and Prost. And it wasn't much of a difference. I mean, Senna only won out due to reliability. The reliability in the car for the FW14 designed by Adrian Newey wasn't the most reliable car but was a very fast car. But as they cracked down on the reliability and had far fewer reliability issues in 1992, they took their first championship. And from 1992 to 1993, they went on to actually win 17 out of the 21 Grand Prix, whether that had been Nigel Mansell or Ricardo Patrese. And honestly, the record that we just had, the 10 wins in a row, could have been held by Nigel Mansell if he didn't have the bad luck. In Monaco, he retired in Canada, but if it wasn't for that, he would have had 10 wins right there. That was the only thing holding him back. Now, at the end of the year, Hungary, Belgium didn't really go his way. Italy, he retired. Japan, Australia retired. He had a first place in Portugal as well. But it comes to show you, in that era, reliability was a lot different. Nowadays, have you ever seen Max shut down? I mean, he had a little problem in the beginning, but that's about it. This car continued to revolutionize Formula One. As I said, this is now a banned innovation for the current regulations that we have, but it was something that was proposed to actually stop porpoising because the car that I was talking about, the 1982 Lotus, that actually introduced active suspension, used this method to stop its porpoising. But nowadays, teams have different solutions and the actual innovation of active suspension is still not being used because it's a little bit too overpowered at the moment and they want to try and make these cars as best as possible when it comes to the dirty air and really racing in general because if cars are using active suspension i mean if this rb19 had active suspension it would probably be a bullet and honestly like a track like austria that's already pretty close to the one minute mark on lap time 
would probably be under a minute with that RB19. That is how strong this suspension setup was. The actual unison of the aerodynamics and the suspension made this car what it was. It wasn't just one thing or another. So Adrian Newey and Frank Derny really were the dream team together. I mean, I can't even forget about Patty Lowe, who was also a very big innovator in this. They had something for the car that nowadays is looked at as DRS, but for them was an insane innovation at the time and gave something of the idea of what DRS nowadays. On the steering wheel, they had a button that would lower the car to the ride height that was optimal to make the diffuser stalled to go another 10 kilometers faster on the straights. This was used by only their car and only their car had it at this time. And funny enough, as is talked about in the interview, Nigel Mansell would actually sometimes forget to close this quote unquote DRS that they had. The drivers used it on every straight, if they remembered, <laughs> and um, they had to remember to release it before the braking point. Uh, which Nigel didn't always remember to do because he, he he liked to push things harder. <laughs> the system that actually lowered the car and gave the diffuser the stall to go faster, sometimes going into the corners because he liked making it harder on himself. Now, Nigel Mansell was always there to try and extract lap performance, but this car was so perfect at taking anything. It even took curbs at a pace that our cars that we actually see in 2023 do not take. Now, you know in Monaco, that little stump from the tree that every driver has to take a different path down? Well, the Williams car was actually able to go over even that stump perfectly because the actual computer system was able to calculate how it needed to take that bump. It was so optimal in every single corner. It just had the perfect ride height when it needed to be and what side the active suspension needed to be pushing on. It was an extreme technology. This current type of suspension is actually used in a lot of modern day cars. And I'm talking about your Audis, your Porsches, your BMWs, even normal cars as to the Hondas. They use active suspension because it is the safer method. It keeps the ride a lot smoother. It's not used to the degree that Williams used it for in their FW14B. It was used at an extreme version there and one that other competitors could never compete with on the grid. This will to this day and probably forever be one of the most game changing evolutions in Formula One. And my question for the day for you guys is with this car, with this actual Williams FW14 being so innovative, do you think Formula One should change from regulations to just having real no cap on their regulations? So you can kind of just do whatever. Cause I've seen that be kind of something that's spoken about and talked about a lot nowadays when it comes to regulations. I want to hear your thoughts down below and I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Williams car. I mean, they've been pretty competitive this year. Can they bring it back? Let's see. Let me know your thoughts down below. I would love to hear them. Please leave a like, subscribe. It would mean the world and peace.